stand aside. Yeah. Let's see everybody. Let's sing to the Lord a word of prayer. And we don't get our music. Our Father, we are so thankful for this another beautiful day. Thanking you, Father, for your love, your kindness, your mercy, your grace. And Father, for the privilege that we have again on this end of the Lord's Day to come to the house of God to not only worship you, but to praise you and to fellowship one with another, Lord. This, this is our day. I want to thank you for it. Bless those that have come and Lord, meet those that are out maybe for sickness or some at work. But Lord, we just want you to know we appreciate it the privilege that we have to come before you. Bless the service, bless the singing, and we'll thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Have a song book. Let's stand together. Page 495. Page 495. We're going to sing about the rain today. The showers of blessing. Well, it's nice and sunny outside. Amen. Let's check someone's hand. Read in the name of the Lord. Tell me glad to see them in the house of the Lord today. Thank you. 
surmise a lot of things, but we'll really never know until we show up there. Amen. Amen. What a day it'll be. <clears throat> we talk about a day that won't just be for a day, it'll be eternity. That's right. Yes. We'll be in a place where there'll be no sorrow there, no trouble, no trial. Take your Bible this morning, if you would, turn to the book of John's Gospel, chapter number 7. <coughs> and I'm going to begin reading in verse 32 this morning. Verse 32 of that chapter. <coughs> says, the Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things uh, concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while am I with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. Ye shall seek me and shall not find me, and where I am, thither he cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he, be, he go, that we shall not find him? Will he go into the dispersed among the Gentiles, and teach the Gentiles? What manner of saying is this, that he said, Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me, and where and where I am, there thither he cannot come. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me as the scripture. That's something we got to hold on yes, to. Yes, amen. amen. As the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. But, the, but this spake he of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Father, we just want to bow and thank you for the service this morning thus yes. far. Thank you for your folks, Lord, that have come today to fellowship one with another, to fellowship around the Spirit of God, and to worship you in the singing, looking into the Word of God this morning. Just ask you to bless us and meet our needs. Forgive us for we fail you, and we will certainly praise you for all you do for us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Sometimes things happen. Sometimes you get to water and start to even read what you're trying to read. Amen. Mm -hmm. But you just bear with me if you would. I want to speak just for a little while this morning. An invitation by Jesus. An invitation by Jesus. And as we look into the Word of God, I want to start, I guess, Jesus is here teaching in the temple. And as we look in this verse 33, the Bible says, Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while, just a little while, I am with you. And then I go unto him that sent me. My, won't that be a, a day to rejoice in? Yes. Today, I'm going to be with you just for a little while. But I'm fixing to go back to, to him that sent me. Yeah. And one of these days, that's what we're going to look forward to. Yes. Amen. Looking forward to that day that we go to where Jesus is. He said, you shall seek me and shall not find me. And where I am, thither ye cannot come. Mm -hmm. at, at this time and place in time, as he was dealing with the Jewish people, because of their life, because of uh, the law that they endeavored to keep and could not keep, and everything that was in there, he's letting them know that where he's going, he said, uh, I'm going to go. But he said, uh, 
whither I go, thither ye cannot come. Now, that's the hardest thing. Where I'm going, you're not going. You can't come there. Why? Because of the spiritual condition of their soul. Under the bondage of the law, they had no freedom that God wanted his people to have. And they couldn't go where he was at. They might make it to the temple. They may go down there and worship and do the things they do under the law. But the law can't save. Mm -hmm. And the temple wasn't the place it was needed. It was the house of God. That's right. So as we think about this and look at it just for a few moments, uh, there's just a few things that I want to try to point out to you. He says here in verse 33 and verse 34, he told them, he said, uh, Ye shall seek me and shall not find me, and whether I am, where I am, thither you cannot come. And as he was talking to them and sharing with them those very thoughts of his life, they needed something greater than what they had in the world. You know, I got to think about that, and, and, I, and I don't say this to be mean or this whatever. There's just a whole lot of folks in the world today who go to a church, who go some, some place of worship, but they're not where they need to be with God. Folks, if this book isn't preached, salvation by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, is it not preached to take you there, you cannot go. That's, That's right. right. That's, That's right. right. You've got to know Jesus That's and the right. great pardon of sin mm -hmm. of your life and you have to have the blood applied to you. That's right. Amen. That's Amen. exactly right. People say, well, I, I go to church. Are they preaching the Bible? Are they preaching Christ? Are they preaching the blood? Salvation by grace through faith? Yeah. Folks, there's a whole lot of things that we're looking at. Even, I mean, it was this, is, this was just the Jews. It was just the law. It was just the fact that they could make it to their place of worship. But they were not in no position to get to heaven. That's that right. way. Mm -hmm. That would not get him there. Right. It would in the days past and gone, maybe, but not now. So he goes on. I'm just going to read a few verses here for you and get down to where I want to go. He says in verse 35, he said, Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go? He said that we shall not find him. Where be, uh, where he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? See, they had things like that in their mind. Like, he's going to go talk to them Gentiles, you know. No, he was talking to them. Yeah. He was there for them. Uh -huh. But the Bible says, what manner of saying is this, that he said, ye shall seek me and shall not find me, and wherever I am, thither ye cannot come. You know what, folks? Religion won't get you to heaven. No, it's not really. It will not do it. There's a lot of religious people in our world today, and they think they're going to heaven, but they are not going. Yeah, that's right. You've got to come by the way of the cross. Amen. You've got to come through the shed blood of Jesus Christ Amen. to get to heaven. Amen. And so as we think about that and look at this, look at this next verse. He said, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto who? me and drink he that believeth on me as the scriptures have said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water Jesus has said something in that verse 37 that really gripped my heart he said that 37 he said if any man thirst let him come unto who me, me, and drink. Come to that fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's veins, where sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilt. Amen. Amen. You're religious, and you keep the law, and you walk the talk, and walk, and all that stuff, but you have never been to that fountain filled with blood, Amen. drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Amen. And so as he's Getting this thing across to them, he said, in that verse, he said, uh, he said, uh, let him, that, that, that little phrase really got to hold my heart. And I was reading it, and I thought, man, that's the, that's the need of our, of our society. That's the need of our day. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Yes. 
He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. So Jesus was saying, come unto me, all ye that are heavy and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Amen. Come to me and I'll take your burdens. Amen. I'll do for you what you need done if you'll just come to me. I thought about, uh, I thought of two and I, I went over there and I'm going to try to get over there right now. I want, you to, I want you to think about this. You remember the situation of Jesus coming and uh, the woman at the well, and she was drinking, uh, drawing water, and she was going to drink, and she used to draw, draw some water to take back in the village, and Jesus was sitting on the bell. bell. But, I mean, he was sitting back there, amen? Yeah. And I want to just flip over there that quick, to chapter 11. <clears throat> chapter 11. I'm just looking away. It's, it's, it's John chapter number four. Yes. I saw I, I got so many verses here I'm lost in. Four, yes. Four ten. Look what it says here. Jesus had come into the land and, and the Bible says he says in verse number ten, Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel? Knowest not these things? And I'm still not what I need to be. I'm in chapter 3. In chapter number 4. Yes. Verse 10. Amen. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith unto thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given me living water. Amen. And I want to all want to know, but I, I want you to think about that. Jesus told this lady, if you'd ask for me, I would give you living water. Yes. What is that living water? Amen. Amen. So as we think about those things, and, and we, I don't know, go on. In chapter number four, verse number 13, look what it says. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. So he's letting her know that I've got something special for you. And it will supply that spiritual need in your life forever. You won't. One shot of that will take care of it. Amen. Amen. That's and right. You ain't going to have to come from the water that you drink to try to take care of your physical needs. I'm going to give you some spiritual drink. Amen. That's right. And one that will absolutely take care of things. So as we look in the Word of God and we think about these thoughts in our heart and mind this morning, it's really got on mine, and I tried to get some things lined out here. Uh, and for, for whosoever will, listen, I, I want to be nice to everybody. I don't care if they're sinners. I don't care if they go to church or don't go to church. I'm going to be nice to them. And I'm not going to say anything to try to hurt anybody. But I'll tell you what, <clears throat> folks, unless they are in the church, in a place where they can hear the word of God preach. Jesus is the one who makes the invitation come unto me. Yes. Amen. That's right. I give you living water. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. That's the only place you can find it is in a place where they preach the word of God. Amen. Where they lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. I, I, I'm not going to be mean to nobody if they don't go that and that's, I mean, that's between God and them. That's right. But I would tell anybody that will give me an opportunity that you're going to have to come to that living fountain. You're going to have to come to that fountain that's, that will wash you on the inside of your life, your heart and soul, if you're going to make it to heaven. Right. And it's going to take one thing. It's going to take the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. So it's, it's that living water. And it's, it's unbelievable how things are lined out like that in the scripture, but it's here. And so as we think about it, think about what Jesus said to the people, you know, over and over again, 
It, it's, it's something that we've got to have. We've got to have a relationship with the, with the giver of life, the sustainer of life, and what he has to offer us that will get us there. See, God is eternal. And we can only be eternal by coming through him in him. Yes. And that only way it could happen, he had to come and put on human flesh and be called the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he had to go and put up, that, let them put him on a cross and crucify him and sacrifice him that the whole world through him could be made alive. Because outside of that, we're all born sinners. Every man, woman, boy, girl comes into this life with a sinful nature. We have a human nature. And that thing's got to be changed through the washing and the, of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as we think about that, you know, it's unbelievable. Now, I know I've got that verse listed here for some reason. Matthew 10 and verse number 28. I'm going to get over here. The body says, Fear not them which kill the body, yes. but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him, fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul in the Yes. Amen. So, we, we, there's a lot of fears that people have in their life about a lot of things, but they need to realize the one that they need to fear more than anything else is eternal God. That's right. He's, he's, uh, so I guess you could say he's got his hand in throttle on the world. Amen. He's in control. He's in control. So, over and over and over in scripture, Jesus told the little lady at the well, and I'm going to, I want us to think about that just a little bit. The woman at the well, she wanted that water. Yes. And he gave it to her. She went back into the village and she told everybody down there. And some of them came out there. And others who didn't come, he went down to them. And that whole community knew Jesus Christ, Savior and Lord, before he left her. That's right. So what a, what a joy and what a blessing it is to think about uh, what God is able to do and will do if people will let him do. Amen? Yes. And I, and I, and I, appreciate, I appreciate the kindness of God and everything. He doesn't force anybody to come to him. He woos them to him through the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. He does. <clears throat> over and over again in the scripture. And I was looking even over here in the book of First, uh, First Thessalonians. And like I said, I probably had way too much lying down here to be able to get around a lot of it. In First Thessalonians chapter number uh, four, verse 13, it says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, Mm -hmm. that you saw or not, even as others, yes. which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, also which uh, sleep in Jesus, will God reign with him. <clears throat> and he goes on to say, For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and yes. the of the coming Amen. of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with the sound of the archangel, Amen. voice of archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Yes. I always try to emphasize that. I, I love our church. God's given us a beautiful place to come uh, to worship Him, and, and we need to honor it, and we need to take care of it, and we need to come here knowing that this thing was dedicated for Him. But this church can't save me. Yeah. Some people say, well, I've been baptized. Baptism won't save me. Yeah. You've got to come to that fountain filled with blood. Yes. Drawn from Emmanuel's flames. Where sinners plunge beneath the blood and resolve. Amen. That's what we've got. That's the baptism we've got. That's right. So as we come, if we can stop and think about that, you know, God is so gracious, so merciful, and so kind. And it, 
He tells us in the, in the Word of God, you know, that, that we are foremost in the heart and mind of, of His creation. He's been here for Sunday school to realize everything that went on that looked very ugly with Joseph being thrown in a pit. Yeah. And them wanting to kill him and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And they didn't do that, but they thought, well, we got rid of him now for good. Mm -hmm. We sold him. We take him down into the land of Egypt. We're through with that boy. No, they're just fixing to find out a lot about him. That's right. God has plans for everybody. If they will just get in the right place at the right time, uh -huh. in the right position, uh -huh. God will do for all of us what he wants to do. Praise God Lord. is not concerned about anybody dying and going to hell or, or being thrown to a side. He wants us to know him, come by him, walk with him, yes. love him, uh -huh. and, and, and live a life that will honor and glorify him for what he's done for him. Yes. My, what a God we serve. Amen. What a God we serve. Amen. Amen. I know I've referred to too much around here already, but I'll never forget the night that I got saved. Amen. I was raised here in Hannah area, went to school here, run around with some of these Indian boys down here, and they always stomp rounds over Saturday night and everything, just to see who was there and what was going on. And then we went on. But I'll never forget the night that God got a hold of my heart, and I walked down and gave my life to Christ. Amen. It changed my life totally. Set me on a whole different path, way of life. And I praise Him for that. I, I've never said this before here in this church or any other church, I guess. But here I have become an old man, and God's let me come back to Hannah, and He's let me come out here on this side of town where I make a lot of trips, <laughs> teach ground, on over to Vernon, and on out to Hill the whole nine yards. But He brought me back to Hannah. To stand as a testimony of the grace of God Amen. and to preach God's word Amen. and to have the privilege to preach here at Wilberforce. Yeah, I'll never, I'll never forget this. I'll never let it down. God brought me here at Wilberforce Church to be able to stand and preach Christ, man's only hope of glory. Amen. And preach about the shed blood of Jesus. Yes. Christ. I can stand on this old book, sixteen eleven. King James author, and hold it in my hand and says, I'll listen to this book. And if I tell you another story, and I'm not going to tell you, but I can tell you another one that shocked the prophet, uh, but I'm not going to tell you to you, amen? <laughs> <laughs> nice. I, I was going to tell you it happened. I got saved. I, I got to listen to this book preach. But when I got saved, I couldn't even read it. I mean, it made no sense to me whatsoever. The language and the, the way it was put in the, in the scripture, then he tried to hit me. And I, I said, no, that's poor God saved. Uh, she told me, she said, she, she had a Bible, she read it. And I tried to read this thing, I couldn't read it. I said, I ain't reading it, I can't even figure nothing out. I got saved, I was reading it before the month was over. Amen. Yeah. God somehow does it. I don't know, and I don't know why. And I'll say this, and God will probably straighten me out later. It was like God put some light in the of my eyes. And I, I don't know why. I could not read that book. I couldn't figure it out. I said, where'd you start? Well, Genesis, you know. <laughs> <laughs> she was stuck in the New Testament. I had a bit of luck. I don't know. Of course, I'm going to tell you something. I have started reading this book, and I have never read it. Amen. I love the word of God. Amen. I read it every morning, every night. I pray. Many pray for him. We pray together. This book has been our Lord since I got saved. Amen. God called me to preach. I got to come back home. The very first place that he sent me was among our people. But he sent me to them of all places. But that was one of the great grandparents' church. They started that when they came over in the 1800s, 1850s. Grandfather was there, my grandmother, all my family was there. That's when he stuck me the first round of the box. Now they knew me when I was lost. But then they come to know me and that's what I said. And God blessed and used. I've been there for just under 10 years. And I, I had I had several men full of things that come, got saved. Answered the call to preach the 
happened to go preach downtown. One of them, I know the church he probably remembers. Uh, he didn't think his name <laughs> down at New Arbor. Him, New Oklahoma. You don't know him. You ever hear of New Oklahoma? He was a full blood shop dog. He married Dan Phillips' daughter. He answered, he come and got saved. And, and he answered the call to preach while I was there. And after I left, he took that church and pastored it for years. Yeah. My number one boy, amen. Gary yeah. Hawkins. Amen. He was the first one. Amen. Got saved under the preaching of the word of God. Amen. That I preached. Right. And then answered the call to preach. Amen. We baptized him in a pond and half of you followed. At least the outside people. Yeah. <laughs> said they didn't believe it. They said, I'll have to see it. And they come to the pond mm -hmm. to watch Gary Hawkins get baptized. Wow. Amen. And Gary Hawkins not only has started churches, he's went all over this country preaching the word of God. Amen. Amen. I send him a little, a little deal every year for Father's Day, just a little short thing text. And he, he sends me one back. He seldomly fails to put in there. You're my real father. Amen. That's what the dog. That's what the dog church. Thank God that God saved me, sent me back. And I know those young men from out there, little cold area, and they're all preaching the word of God. They're carrying on the legacy, amen. 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 Folks, we need to we need to think about our life. We need to think about our church. We need somehow to get some people in here and get, see them get saved. And God called them. We don't sure don't want the church to, to go down. We want this church to stand. Yes. As a testimony of the grace of God. And the power of God. Man, I don't know who it'll be. Maybe somebody from that back there. Could be somebody from that over here. I don't know. Amen. Amen. That's right. Someone. God will get a hold of their heart. Get a hold of their life. Yeah. They've already been to Calvary. They've already been under that fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And God will call them, save them. They ought to be saved. But God will call them to preach. We need to start really praying. Yes. We need, we need some young prayer. Amen. Young men, answer the call to preach. They'd be willing to come. I won't get too old one of these days. I won't fall over dead. Amen. But I just really think about a lot of stuff like that. And I'm trying to put down a lot of verses and I ain't going to be able to use them all for no sketch. I don't think I don't need them in a lot. Sometimes some things is hard for anybody to do what they need to do. It's getting it lined up, amen. But I want you to know I love the church. I love you folks. And I mean, we need to pray that God would raise up some young men out of this church. Yes. That he could, that would be willing to take it. Brother Gary, when I left for the cold year, Brother Gary Hawkins stepped into my place. I taught him, trained him for several years. And, and uh, when I left there, he came in and took the book. Stayed there a long time. So we don't, we don't want to look around and think that we're going to go out of business. Amen. We're, we're in business. We're going to stay in business. Amen. Amen. We're going to keep on reaching out to the unreached, touch the untouchables, and love the unlovely. And ask God to do a work of grace in our heart. Yes. Let's bow our head with every word of prayer. Father, we love you this morning. We thank you so much for the steady blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. For what he done for us to bring us in that relationship that we need to have with you. Lord, you continue to be with us this morning, be with our hearts, and lead us in a way that we might honor and please your precious name. And we're thankful for everything we do in Jesus' name. Amen.